I think the primary focus should really be about those B2B connections. And then again, when you're posting content, you just wanna think about that as you look at each platform. Hey, welcome back to Builder Funnel TV. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the four most important social media networks for your construction business. Whether you're a remodeler or a home builder or a contractor, I wanna break down what those platforms are, but by now you probably already know what they are. I also wanna talk about how they're different, how you should be thinking about each one. So let's start with the big dog in the room, which is Facebook. And Facebook still has the largest user base, right? They have the most uh, users on their platform. You have the biggest audience there. And that doesn't necessarily mean that's a good or a bad thing, but generally that means there's high adoption, uh, still high use over on that platform. This platform, I want you to think about, uh, I'm gonna kind of attach a name to each one of these platforms. And this one is gonna be lead generation. Yes, it can do a number of other things, and we'll talk about that with some of the other platforms. There's a lot of crossover, but I'm gonna give you what I think is the top feature or top way you should be thinking about each one of these platforms, um, even if they can do multiple things for your business. Because I think we have a tendency to lump all social media networks into one bucket, which is I'm on social media. That's pretty broad, and today there are tons of social media networks, so it's important to think about, okay, which platform am I, am I on? Why am I on that platform and what is it doing for me? So with Facebook, we wanna think lead generation. So when you're posting to Facebook, it's become very much a pay to play. So if you just post something and you let it ride organically, which means you haven't put any budget behind it, typically you're gonna see very low reach, very low engagement. They changed this a number of years ago and it's just continuing to move in this fashion where you basically have to pay to boost it if you want it to reach even your own audience, right? So we spent all these years building up an audience, building up page likes, and then they said, awesome, now you actually have to pay to reach those people that are following you and have volunteered and said, hey, I like this page, I wanna see content. That's just a game we're playing. If you want reach on Facebook, I would budget you know, five or 10 bucks uh, for a post and that will at least get it in front of the people that are already following you and we can create some of that repetition. But then you also have the ability to do um, advertising with Facebook. So you can create very targeted ads on this platform and that can be a very powerful way to leverage Facebook by creating a targeted ad with a targeted audience and driving it back to the website or you can actually use their lead ads program which allows you to capture a name and an email right there on the spot. It's already pre-filled if you go that route, just a quick tip, I would add a custom question that somebody has to fill in. This will increase your quality of leads because if everything's pre-filled, you have a tendency of just getting people that click it, they hit submit, and you start to get a lot more junk mixed in with the good leads. So you typically on Facebook will see a lower cost per lead than a lot of other channels, whether that channel is organic, whether it is uh, Google search, um, whether it's paid uh, on Google, you know, all these other channels that you can look at. Um, you can see a pretty low cost per lead, but you do have to sift through a lot of uh, what we'll call junk, and then there are some great leads that get funneled in um, through that channel. So that's how I would think about Facebook. Let's move over to Instagram. Now Instagram, I want you to associate with more of the word branding. So Facebook was lead gen, Instagram is more brand building. Um, this platform, obviously you're familiar with it, you're posting more visual things like photos and videos and you can do reels and stories and all kinds of stuff now. It's, it's evolved quite a bit, but it's actually a lot harder to generate leads on this channel than it is with Facebook and it's just the way the platform's set up. You can't put links in the description, you have to force people to go to your bio and then they have to click on stuff and then eventually get back to your site or fill out some sort of form. So unless you're running ads, which is a separate um, situation, I would think of this channel as a great branding channel. So you're wanting to put you know, high quality photos and videos. You wanna kinda have an aesthetic look about your profile page um, and you're creating you know, this, uh, this brand really that people can experience. People go there and check you out. They kinda wanna get to know your team. They wanna see what you're doing. But again, we don't see this channel uh, as a big lead driver. And this is from looking at data all over the country, we have hundreds of portals that we look in, we can see all the analytics. It does not drive a high volume of leads. It is an important channel, but again, think 
brand building. So if you're gonna spend some time there, you're gonna uh, basically be using that as a way to stay in front of people and uh, have people come verify who you are as a business after they've found you somewhere else. Unless you go all in on the platform and you really spend tons and tons of time, you can generate leads that way, but generally 99% of construction businesses, it's a great brand building tool. All right, so that's Instagram. Let's talk about hows. Now, I am not a big proponent of paying for hows. If you're paying for hows and it's generating you leads and customers, I'll never tell you to stop, but that is, uh, I would say, the m minority of people I talk to. Most people are paying hows and they're not really happy with the results. I recommend using the free platform because with the free platform, you can still generate some leads uh, by using you know, the projects and the, the idea books and using good tagging and descriptions and getting good reviews. And you can leverage all of those things to move up in their rankings uh, organically and you can still get some leads that way. I find the paid program tends to get leads all over the board. So if you're a design, build, remodeler, you get a bunch of like fencing leads. And if you're uh, a fence contractor, you'll get stuff for custom homes. It just seems like they haven't quite nailed down a uh, type of project and, and how they're kind of doling out those leads when you're paying for territories. So that aside, I still think it's worth the time to invest there. And again, uh, with this one, I would think of the word reputation. So it's a great place to get a bunch of reviews, post your best projects. People are coming there to find, you know, remodelers or contractors, but they're also going there and they're looking at those projects and they're also looking for reviews. So if somebody types in your company and reviews, there's a good chance hows might pop up because their site is really strong. So if you have a profile there, there's a good chance somebody will check you out there. And it is a fairly review-based site. So it's a good place to invest in reviews. I would say uh, maybe second or third in line after Google. I think Google's always your top spot right now, but Hows is a great place to pick up reviews. So think of this as a place where you wanna add the best projects, have really good descriptions, and focus on at least getting a bunch of reviews and look at the co competition in your area. See if you can get more reviews than anyone else and that will really help you in uh, showing up in their organic rankings. It's kind of their own ranking system just like on Google if somebody types in different things. That's how I think about hows. I think it's still worth investing time there. And then let's talk about the fourth one which is LinkedIn and the word here is networking. So I found that company pages on LinkedIn don't work that great. And honestly, especially in the construction space, I think they can work okay in the tech space and some other industries, but really haven't seen those pages used very well or just those pages be successful. So think of it as using your own personal page and your own personal brand or different individuals within your company. You can all be leveraging LinkedIn. And again, think more connections. You wanna connect with referral partners. So it could be uh, architects, it could be real estate agents, it could be lenders, it could be other people that offer you know, other trades that you don't offer. So if you're an interior remodeler, maybe you partner with exterior companies or vice versa. Uh, because what that will allow you to do is stay connected with all these people and then you can create these referral uh, networks and referral channels. So as you're posting content there, it might look a little different than the content you're posting to say Facebook where your target audience is the end homeowner and the end consumer. Whereas on LinkedIn, you'll probably see more success if you're building those referral relationships and kind of that thinking B2B, other businesses, other business owners, that's who you wanna be connecting with there. I think there's a little bit of opportunity to connect with um, you know, your target audience on LinkedIn, especially if they're professionals, career oriented, so business owners or um, higher income professions. If that's your target audience, then I think you can do some work there to connect with people in your city, region, area that you guys do work in. Um, but I think the primary focus should really be about those B2B connections. And then again, when you're posting content, you just wanna think about that as you look at each platform. So Facebook, it's to the end homeowner. So what content is appealing to them? And then again, you're gonna boost it, pay to play, and that's kind of your lead gen channel. Instagram, you're gonna post content there. Again, the end consumer, but it's more of a branding place. So you're just trying to stay in front of them, um, present very professionally, and stay in touch and kind of think nurturing. Then on house, you're trying to build your reputation. So great project photos, good descriptions, and then reviews. Don't forget about those. And then LinkedIn is gonna be networking with other businesses and 
uh, referral partners. And so think about content that would appeal to them or that would build trust with them so they might want to send work to you. All right, guys, that's what I got for you today. Those are four networks that I think that you should be focused on today, even though there are about 100 social media channels out there. Clear out the noise, focus on the top four, and remember those key phrases associated with each network. All right, guys, we'll see you next week here on Builder Funnel TV.